Hello everyone, I'm Booth here from Target Common YouTube channel. In this tutorial, we will explore an interesting feature of Playwright called UI mode. And don't confuse UI mode with show browser option. So, UI mode is essentially one way to run Playwright test, which offers an enhanced experience for both test development and execution. We can easily walk through and visually see what was happening before, during, and after each step. Let's see UI mode in action to have a better understanding. I have already covered multiple ways to run Playwright test in my last video. Let's run test using UI mode. For that, launch the terminal and then type npx playwright test dash dash UI. Hit enter. It will take few seconds and it will launch this window. Let me maximize this window. And this window shows all the tests in the testing sidebar. And we have options to run all those tests together or we can run individual spec file or any specific test of this spec file. So when we mouse over, we can see this triangle icon which is to run the test. And if you have mentioned any tag, that tag will be shown here as well. And if you don't want to load all the spec files in this UI mode, then we can pass a specific spec file name with the command. Let me show you that quickly. So I'm going to close this window and here I can use npx playwright test and suppose I want to load this submit form spec file. So I can use only submit and then I can use dash dash UI. Hit enter. So this time you can see it has loaded only feature file which contains the word submit. But for this video, I'm going to load all the spec files. So let's close this window again and run the first command which will load all my spec files in my UI mode. So we have a lot of options here. Let's see them one by one. So on the top, we have filter option. And if you expand this filter, we can see all the projects here like Chromium, Firefox, WebKit. If you have more projects in your configuration file, everything will be loaded here. And by default, Chromium is checked. That means if you run any test, it is going to run only in Chromium. But if you want to run in other projects, you can obviously check these projects. When you run the test, you can filter past, failed or skipped test. And also we can use some text like I want to get has title test. Then I can use has title. So it is going to list test where we have has title test title. And if you're using tags with your test, then you can click on this tag. Then it is going to put the tag name in the filter and it will show you all the tests where we have used that smoke tag. So at the parent level or any specific spec file or test, we have basically three options. First one is run. Second one, you go to the source code of the spec file or test. And we have another option called watch. This I will explain you in some time. In the parent level, we have one icon which we can use to stop the running test. Let's run one simple test, which is has title. So click on this triangle icon and now see the action. So here under this actions tab, we see my test is running and it is passed, which took total 3.7 second. And if you click the second icon, which is go to source here, I have only two steps in my test. I'm navigating to this playwright.dev page and then I'm just expecting the title playwright. So before executing the actual test, it is calling before hooks, which is basically to set up browser. Since we are using page feature provided by Playwright, so if you expand this before hooks, you can see it is calling internally browser context and page. In my previous video, I have already explained that if you don't use existing fixture like page, then we can launch browser using these statements. So first we need to launch browser. Then we need to get the context, then new page. Same thing is happening in this before hooks. If you expand this, you can see it is launching the browser type, which is Chromium because we have selected the Chromium project. Then it is getting the new context and then new page. Then we have page.go to, which will load the URL in the browser. And then next step, we have to assert the title. After that, we have after hooks, which will clean up the page and context. In the right hand side, we have another section where we have three important tabs, action, before and after. If you go to this step, page.goto and click on action tab. So it is showing you the detail, what kind of action 
it is performing and we have one screenshot. Then if you click on this before tab, it will show you the screenshot before performing the action. And once this action is completed, then again it will show you the screenshot. Since this is very simple test, so we don't see much difference. But let me run this submit form test. Click on this run icon. So in the actions tab, we have all the steps, whatever we have written in our test block. So here also I am using existing page fixture. So it is calling before hooks and doing the setup, basically launching the Chromium browser. Then first action is to wait for timeout. So here I am just waiting for 5 seconds. Then I load the page. So in the before tab, we can see nothing is loaded in the browser. But once this action is performed, then we see my HTML page is loaded. In the next action, I am just asserting the title. Let's see next action where I am entering name. So if you click on this action tab, you can see this action is going to be performed on this name text box. That's why it is highlighted. And if you go to this before tab, you can see here we have nothing for the name text box. But once this action is performed, and if you go to after tab, you can see it has entered a mode in name text box. Similarly, if you go to next action, which is to enter email ID in my email text box, if you go to action tab, you can see email text box is highlighted. In the before tab, you can see email text box is empty. And if you go to after tab, we can see email has been entered in this email text box. If you go to next action, which is to perform click on submit button, and go to action tab, you can see it is going to click on this submit button in the middle. You can see this red icon. In the before tab, you can see nothing has happened. And if you go to the after tab, you can see it has clicked on submit. And because of that, we see form submitted message. On the top, we see timeline. If you simply mouse over, you can see what was happening at every timestamp. Like here we are waiting for 5 seconds, so we don't have anything. But if you go further, you can see page has been loaded and then it is entering the details. In the left hand side, we have one option called reload. So suppose you make any changes in your spec files or you add or delete any spec files. So instead of relaunching this UI mode, we can use this reload icon. It will refresh or reload all the spec files for you. Then we have one option called towel output. If you click on this, you see similar output which we see in VS Code console or terminal when we run test. In this output, you can understand that when you run test in UI mode, the code is also generated, which we can see by running this npx playwright show report command, or you can go to report folder in your project. If you click on this toggle output again, you can see the previous window. Now see some tabs present at bottom. So first one is locator. So suppose you want to get the locator of this name text box. So for that you see this icon which is pick locator. Select this and simply select the element and click on it. So you can see one locator it is giving get by placeholder enter your name under the locator tab. Suppose here I make any change like any move name. So you can see here it is highlighting two elements that this locator is going to match with two elements here. But suppose I put some junk values here. So you can see nothing is highlighted on the this screenshot. We can also use this pop out option to open this page into a separate window. Let's click on this and we see it has opened the browser. And here also I can simply inspect this page and get the locator. We see all the options which we see in actual browser. Then we have another tab called source. If you click on this icon here for this test, it is going to highlight the source code in this source tab. And here it is highlighting this step because we have selected this step in the actions tab. If you want to change anything in this spec file, then you can click on this pop out window, which will take you to VS Code and keep the cursor at this specific line. And whatever you want to change, you can change it and then simply reload this UI mode. So it will have the latest changes. Then we have another tab called call. So basically, whatever action we have selected here in the actions tab, all these tabs will show data related to that. That means if I select this page.go to, you can see data will be changed here. If you select this one, data will be changed. 
So basically this call tab shows the action details like it is going to use expect dot to have title. So how much time it took then which locator it has used expression what we are expecting and when you don't pass all the values so it will use some default values. So everything it is showing in this call tab. Then we have log and here you can see what is happening behind the scene. Here we are expecting title to be playwright. So this is going to call this method with timeout 500 millisecond. Then it is waiting for the locator root because we are trying to get the title. And then it finds the locator and asserting the title. This errors tab will show you any error happened in your test. Then we have console which will print all the console's logs which might be from your application or from your spec files. So let me add some console logs in my submit form test. So click on this show source option and then click on this open in VS code option. Here I am going to add one console.log log from spec and save it and also I am going to add the log statement in my html file. So let's open this html file and under the script I am going to put this log. So let me change the text here log from application. I am going to save the changes and then reload UI board and to select this test and come down you see this console.log. Now run this test. Console.log statement will not be shown here because that is not the action and if you go to console tab we see log from application and log from spec icon you can see you can see different icons for the logs since this is coming from your application so we see this kind of icon but if the log is coming from the spec file you can see this icon for this errors tab i will change the title so my test should fail let's go to ui mode and reload it and then the test. So you can see my test is failed obviously because I am putting wrong title and in the errors tab it says this locator should have a string form submitted but we have form submitted with exclamation mark. If you go to network tab it will show you all the calls basically which we see in our browser console. Then we have attachments tab where you can see captured screenshots and you can compare during the visual testing. We have third icon called watch for every spec file test or at the parent level. What is use of this watch icon? I click on this watch icon. You can see color has been changed and if you make any changes in this particular test. So here I am going to put the exclamation mark back. Simply save it and if you go to UI mode you can see test is automatically running that is the use of this watch and as soon as you make the changes and save it automatically ui mode will run your test and if you love to work in dark mode then you can click on settings and check this dark mode option so we are going to use this ui mode a lot in my upcoming videos but if you have any doubt please comment on this video and if you really like my videos, please like, comment, subscribe and share with others. Thank you everyone.